What's going on, guys? Keith Lambert here with the KFL Playoff Player Interviews, and I am with none other than my good friend, Mr. Daniel Higgins from the Southern Slayers. Daniel, you guys were down on, what, Lake Seminole this last weekend against the uh, Palmetto Punishers, and you guys put up a monster day. Biggest score throughout the league. Uh, tell us a little bit about that team win, and uh, then we'll move into what's going on next week. Well, we had um, – I got up there Friday. We all pretty much pre-fished Friday. I went to the same spot that Matt was at on Friday. Um, I got there about 1030, you know, not really worried because Matt had – on Friday, Matt and Dwayne and all them, they was just crushing them all day Friday. So I got to a little spot, and I think I was in there for 30 minutes. I ended up catching two small – I caught a small one, and then I caught one that was about 20, 21 inches. And that was it. I was done. I was like, okay, this looks like a good spot for tomorrow. We'll just come back here tomorrow. Um, Dwayne didn't feel real good about his spot that he was at. So that Friday night, you know, we had the Palmetto Punishers come over. We all was at the same location, camping and everything. So they come over, hung out, and we strategized. Um, Dwayne ended up going to the same spot that me and Matt was at. Um, we got uh, – where lunchtime was 6 o'clock, and – the time we definitely messed up there because the sun didn't get up till about 6 45 and lines ends was at 6 30 so we got there about i think about seven it took us an hour to get out there to where we was at and right off the bat i went to that same little hole i went into and i was throwing a swim jig and i missed a nice one right off the bat i hooked him come out of the water got off and then um i threw a uh, speed worm and i was able to hook a 16 and I think I got another 19 on the board for the rest of the day. But there, it wasn't as good Saturday as it was Friday, even though we had big numbers. But we could have easily put up 200 inches just it, on Friday. I think as a team, we had over 200 inches in pre fishing. And we tried to shake them off, too. So it wasn't like that. Well, big, big wild card weekend win for you guys against those Palmetto Punishers. And you guys are now looking at a – match against the number one overall seed in the Southern Conference, the uh, Coosa Kingfishers. And uh, it's right there in literally in your backyard on Neely Henry. You live about five minutes away from the water. Uh, tell me a little bit about this match going up against the Coosa Kingfishers. You know they fish well, all well, all year this at, at home. Uh, but you guys have got some sticks going out there, plus a little inside information from yourself. So tell me how you feel about this matchup coming up. You know, I'm not going to say, like, the way that the kingfishers fish on Neely, it's week in and week out, they put up the numbers. And if you've ever fished Neely, you can have those days, but it's hard to do it consistently. So that's the big thing is just finding a location that will produce that. And we have a good generalization of about where we want to go and do on that. Um, I'm going to try something, go look at a few more spots this weekend that I haven't fished on Neely. Because I fish mainly the main river side, so that would be upriver, like right here where I live in Tillerson Bend, all the way down to like Rainbow Landing, all them ramps in between there. Once we get a game plan, we're going to, you know, get us a game plan signed up on where everybody's going to go and where they're going to fish. But, I'm, you know, I'm not sure who the kingfishers are going to bring, but I know whoever it is. It's, some, it's people that's going to be good on Neely, like Coley, Lance, um, Chuck, and uh, Perry, and stuff like that. So that. You know, they're going to do good on Neely. They they haven't lost at Neely, and I can't. I don't think they've lost all year on Neely. And the best team that's even produced any was probably be the Palmetto Punishers. It's probably the best team that's fished against them up here. But well, it's we just, know, you know, fishing, fishing here lately in Alabama has been a little different. They're starting to see a little early fall transition, but we're still battling those high heat days. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be an easy match. It's going to be, I feel like it's going to be a competitive match. Listen, brand new team for you guys. You know, y'all started the year 0-2, had a little confusion about, you know, maybe some continuity issues and stuff like that, some player issues. But, uh, you know, Matt Vaught, Dwayne Dwyer, uh, Joshua Dial, Deal, yourself, Brandon Hewlett, you guys, um, Brad Exum, Scott, Kevin, y'all been able to put some stuff together and just kind of get on a momentum and ride some momentum. Um, can y'all carry that momentum into this match against the Coosa Kingfishers? We definitely can, and we feel we feel really good about this match. We also – another thing that's funny about this, our first loss – Oh, looks like we might have lost Daniel there for a second. Let's see if we can get him back in. All 
While we're waiting to see if we can get Daniel back in, guys, we'll talk a little bit more more about this match. It's going to be the Coosa Kingfishers versus the Southern Slayers. Uh, they're certainly going to be on on Lake Neely Henry. Um, the Southern Slayers have just put up absolutely monster numbers there all season long. Their closest match, as Daniel was saying in the interview, was with um, the Palmetto Punishers. Everything else has been pretty much a runaway win. Uh, only one loss for the Coosa Kingfishers on the season. But these uh, these Southern Slayers have some sticks. You know, look out. Um, Matt Vaught, Dwayne Dwyer, Brandon Hewlett, those guys, um, they, this past weekend uh, against the Palmetto Punishers, I think the top two individual scoring for the day was uh, Matt Vaught with over 140 inches and and uh, Brandon Hewlett with uh, uh, over 140 inches. Let's bring Daniel back in for one more second. Yeah, I don't know. Like we lost you for a second, but we got you back in. Now, I was just – while you were off, I was just kind of telling them about – the rundown for this matchup, uh, but go ahead and continue with saying what you were saying. Uh, the first loss we had was Palmetto Punishers. We was able to get that, avenge that loss this past Saturday. Our second loss was to the Coosa King Fishers at Lake Seminole, so it was our home water, so we get to do that to, you know, go for an avenge and another loss this weekend, and I really do feel good about it. I love Neely. I, it has its days. Um there's definitely quality fish here. You're not going to get no 23, 24-inch kickers or nothing like that. But, you know, you can have some 20-inchers, some 19 and a half, somewhere around there. So we're, I'm thinking about 175 to 180 is what's going to take to win. And I know as a team of four that we can definitely find those style of fish. Excellent. Well, Daniel, let me ask you a couple of questions. You know, at the beginning of the season, again, y'all had a lot of uh, uh, new players together. The team was just kind of learning how to, to deal with each other. But you guys are two wins away from potentially playing for the KFL Cup. What would that mean for yourself and the Southern Slayers first-year team getting to hoist that trophy out at Lake Chickamauga? I mean, that would mean everything to us. Because that's what we – literally, when we put this team together at the beginning of the season, that was our only goal. Our goal wasn't to just make the playoffs or just to get, you know, the first – our goal was to win or nothing. And that's what everybody has fully bought into. We felt – you know, we started 0-2. It was felt like, oh, my gosh, what's, what's going to take to happen? And we had four back-to-back. -back, you know, we went on that run to four, lost to um, Motor City at home. Then we went down to uh, – Louisiana and got that win right there, and we was able to push that momentum going into the playoffs, and we felt good about that, and we still feel good as a team that we can still make it and make it there and win that. Well, this is, like I said, this is the Coosa King Fishers home lake. They are the number one overall seed, but Daniel, it is also your home body of water. Buddy, I want to wish you, obviously, uh, as good of friends as we are, I want to wish you nothing but best of luck. But to the entire Southern Slayers team, guys, good luck. Uh, and you guys stay safe out in the water, and uh, we'll see what happens this coming Saturday. Oh, it's going to be fun. It definitely will be. Make sure you watch till the end because it can – them fish can turn on in, in a moment here. It ain't going to just be a morning bite. It can be an all-day bite. It may be 12, 1 o'clock before you start catching fish. You don't know. So it's, it's definitely going to be a great match. Well, all right, buddy. Well, hey, I look, I, I appreciate you taking the time to come on. And, again, best of luck to you guys this week. All right, thank you. Have a good night. All right, buddy. You too.